Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about some tips that you can use to help find out more information about rural programs and if they're the right one for you. Hi, I'm Dr. Shaw and I'm a rural family medicine resident and on this channel, I make videos on my journey through residency and the strategies that I learned along the way. If you find them interesting, stay tuned. All right, so I've gotten this question quite a bit, and the question is, what do I need to look for in programs when it comes to applying to rural family medicine residency? So the answer to that is pretty broad, but I'm gonna to try to cover it to the best of my ability. This video is primarily meant for fourth year medical students or people that are in a gap year. If you're not in one of those two camps, it might be useful just to listen along so you can get an idea of what to look for. However, it probably will be more useful if you already in, are in that stage of your life. Okay, so logistically, first steps is that when you're applying to residency, you have ERES and you apply the residency through a portal called ERES, Electronic Residency Application Service, I believe. And so all the programs are there and for every single specialty and everybody applies through ERES. When you're applying through ERES, you can filter all the programs that are available in the United States based on their specialty. And so what you would do is that you click on family medicine, so that will give you all the programs in family medicine across the United States. And then after that, what you can do is that there's a search feature and you can type in rural. So this will pull up every single program that has rural family medicine in its the name of the program. And most programs typically do do it that way. So that's one way to efficiently filter through all the programs available. You can filter through by state or region and you know that's a whole separate video. So you filter by family medicine specialty and then type in rural in the search bar and that will give you all the rural family medicine programs that are available. So that's the main logistical aspect of it where you can just see all the programs. Now, the thing is that because family medicine is so broad and in fact I would say rural family medicine is even more broad and I say that because you have the opportunity to do more procedures and more things because for the most part you're you're the only clinician within that region so you have the opportunity to do a lot more so in order to find the right program for you it's important that you know what you're looking for the second thing is how much procedure experience do you want? So some programs may not have that much procedure experience, but for a program like ours, for example, we have an entire block in our first year dedicated to learning outpatient procedures. So that's another thing to take into consideration and things to ask when you are reaching out to programs to learn more about them or just talking in your interview. So those are two big things among others just generally know, have an idea actually of the type of things that you're interested in practicing. So the next important thing is location. Okay, so when you're looking for a rural program, what you wanna ask for is where did most of the residents stay? Because when you're staying in a rural area, there might not be as many housing options and availabilities as let's say a small town or a city might. So it's important to ask where do most of the residents stay? How far do they stay? What's the neighboring town? So that way you have an idea of what your typical commute would be. And if that's something that it'd be feasible for you to do, for the next three years of your program. That's definitely something to consider. And also like when you're going through the location, ask where do people get groceries? What's in, like just things that you would expect that you need in your day-to-day -day life. Just make sure you ask about that or make sure you look into that. And you know, I would highly, highly not recommend, I would highly recommend, actually, I would highly recommend that you do not ask programs Hey, do you have a Starbucks or do you have a Publix? Okay, honestly, it's literally terrible. Like, don't ask programs that. Don't ask, in general, side note, in general, do not ask programs things that can be easily Googled or easily looked up because it just looks really bad. And it looks like you did not put enough effort in. So, you know, the things that I'm telling you, don't go and ask programs about that, but you can ask them about housing, but when it comes to like food and like coffee or you know, whatever other stuff that you can't find by Googling a simple Google search, then you can ask them that. So there's that. The next thing that you wanna look for is ask what do the residents um, do. The, the reason I say this is because some programs may not have the resources to have all the ancillary staff to do things that are typically done by let's say a nurse or a medical assistant or a case manager. So 
you know, or a phlebotomy team. Some places have it, some places don't. So just ask what residents are expected to do. Are you expected to do your own blood draws? Like, what exactly do they do? Or do they focus primarily on the doctor aspect of it? Also, the other thing is to look for and to ask is like, does the program offer house calls for the surrounding region? My program does. I have done so far only one house call, but that's something that we do offer to our patients. So another thing to uh, worth worth considering uh, and to look into to see if a program expects its residents to make house calls. Another thing is to ask what the general population is like. For instance, do you typically see geriatric patients, pediatric and obstetrics? Does it veer to one side or the other? Is it a good balance of both? a good balance of everything so just ask about that and ask what degree of involvement residents are typically have within the community and the reason I say that is because if you if residents typically have a lot of community involvement and they're involved in a lot of activities in that area you it will really factor into your decision about where to live and that goes back to my location point so these are things that are important and worth considering and then this next part is these are some general things to look for i'll make a whole other video on what to ask programs um, as it becomes pertinent but just general things to look for is is program opposed or unopposed meaning what that means is when it's unopposed the program does is in a hospital or a community or the hospital program does or is in a facility that doesn't have any additional residency programs so what that means is that you're not really competing for um, patients to further elaborate on that for example if you're in a hospital that also caters to an obstetrics program the family medicine residents won't have the same degree of involvement as if they would have if they were in a place without any residents at all because then it's all on you so that's what opposed means opposed means you're in a place with other residency programs and other residents from other specialties unopposed no other residency programs within that hospital and you're doing taking care of all, everything the next thing is the degree of OB involvement so I already did touch on that and this is the reason I bring it up again is because it really varies a lot between um, family medicine programs so if it's something that you're really interested in you want to make sure that you're a program that has a lot of emphasis on women's health and obstetrics and if it's something that you're not interested in you want to make sure that you're not at a program that heavily emphasizes on it the next thing is inpatient versus outpatient exposure when you're in family medicine again it really varies but you can have people you can have alumni go into hospitalist medicine you can have alumni go into outpatient medicine and a lot of that will depend on what kind of training you're receiving so ask what is the expected amount of inpatient months that residents do versus like how is what is the structure of the ambulatory and continuity clinic that way you have an idea of what they're not gearing you to but what is the training mostly uh, focused on the next thing as it pertains to the inpatient setting is ask if the family medicine service has its own service so what i mean by that is that does family medicine admit its own patients or do you go off service and follow along with the internal medicine residents so that again that may change how much exposure you have and it might change your overall experience if your hospital has family medicine admitting service. Ask what options for electives you have available if you're interested in global health like I am. You want to be in a place that allows for that to be a possibility and allows for international elective. Not just allows but facilitates it. I mean you can have programs that allow it but if they don't have things set up it is a huge pain in the butt to set it up yourself. Not to say that it's not possible, of course it's possible. It's just that if you wanna make your life easier, you wanna to try to aim for a program that caters to or facilitates things that you're interested in. The other thing is ask about how much research and quality improvement residents are expected to undertake. I believe according to the ACGME guidelines, residents have to do one quality improvement project by the end of residency but maybe it may vary depending on certain programs. Some programs may have a huge research emphasis, some programs may have a huge quality improvement emphasis. So you wanna look into that, especially if you feel one way or another about research. That might be something that you wanna make sure aligns with 
what you want. The last thing is you want to really just try to take a look and see what do most of the residents go on to do. Typically, if you see that a lot of the residents go on to pursue one specialty or another, you can have an idea of what typically, not always, typically the program trains you best for and what they're trying with the type of doctors that they're trying to um, produce. So yeah, that was, these are some of my tips on what to look for when applying to a rural family medicine program. If you're interested in learning more about what to ask as it pertains to match, I will probably make another video about it probably closer to um, like the summer when it becomes, when, when match season comes around. Okay, well I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and thank you for watching. Bye!